Hey everybody, Tom here, and today I want to teach you how to play Tiny Towns. Tiny Towns is a roll and write style game that is more along the lines of like the game Karuba, where um, everybody, instead of having like a pad of paper and a pencil and stuff, we each have our own uh, individual player boards. We're going to be putting kind of we're going to all have the same things called out and we're all going to be putting the same pieces on the boards trying to get the best score so uh, in this game i'm going to attempt my best to play a three player game we're going to have the blue red and yellow players um, up here we have kind of this communal area uh, so in this game we have our little towns and we're going to be building these different buildings in our towns and so these kinds of buildings are communal. Everybody has the chance to build as many of these types of towns as we can and that we want to. Uh, but then on, in each individual player area, we also have these uh, pink buildings called monuments that we are going to be able to build uh, one of each of those and they are unique to every single player. And so, uh, so yeah, we have these different types of buildings that we're going to be putting onto our player board. To build these buildings, we're going to need to place cubes on our player board and these types of arrangements more on that in a second um, but yeah we're going to be placing these cubes as soon as the cubes match these types of arrangements we're going to be able to build a building and as soon as our boards are full uh, we're going to be able to enter scoring person with the most points wins so you can see here that the different types of buildings not only are they built differently but you're going to be able to see and i'll hold these up in a second different text for how they score so yeah, there is a score pad here. I plan on laminating one of these sheets um, and it's really straightforward. Uh, each type of building, we're gonna be able to calculate their score at the end of the game. So for each player, we're gonna just see how many points we get from each building. And at the end of the game, any empty spaces on our board are gonna be worth minus one point. Add all the points up and that's gonna be how we win. So we just wanna build, get the most points from our buildings. So it's going to feel a little complicated if you're not familiar with this game at first, but I am going to go over each of these scoring systems um, just so you have a general idea of how to get points with these different types of buildings. And then, of course, as we're building the buildings, I'll emphasize the types of buildings um, that we're going for. So we'll talk about how to build these buildings in just a minute. Uh, just briefly, there's cubes, as I mentioned. Get the cubes in these arrangements. You can build the building. So the first most basic building and this building is in every single game is the cottage and the cottage is basically going to get three points if the building is fed i'll talk more about what that means next but basically if i can get these cottages into my town three points each if i can feed them and that will lead us to the um granary is that what yeah granary yes so basically what this building does is it feeds the cottages you can kind of see this icon right here matches that icon right there and what this one says in this particular game is this is going to feed all of the buildings in the eight squares surrounding it so our town are these kinds of boards here if i can get a granary green granary granary whatever if i can get one of those let's lay it down like that uh, in that spot and some cottages around it let's just do a pretend okay so this by itself is not worth any points in this particular game, but it's going to feed any of the cottages around it, three points for each of these, as long as they get fed. So if I'm gonna put cottages down, I need to make sure that they are surrounding um, one of these granaries. Is that a granary? I don't, it doesn't matter, I'm moving on. Okay, so those are those two buildings. Next up we have a tailor. So the tailor is worth one point. That icon right there is a point. So just one point for getting that building built, plus one for each of these types of buildings in the four center squares of your town. So we're going to do our best. Not only are we trying to get a granary and cottages surrounding it, but it looks like we want to use these four spaces specifically to get a tailor into it. Okay. Next up, we have a chapel. And a chapel looks like it's going to get one point for each of the cottages that end up being fed so there's kind of a good interplay between the granary and the cottages and the chapels they're going to kind of all play off each other next up we have this factory building so it's this dark black building here 
And it says, when constructed, we're gonna place one of the five resources on this building. So, just as an example, let's pretend I get this building here. Looks like these, these cubes are resources. I would take a cube, put it on this building, and then when another player names this resource, more on that in a minute, uh, you can play a different resource instead. So essentially this kind of, this color cube would become like a wild, okay? But it also looks like that, that particular building is not worth any points, it just will help you earn more points or make it easier for you to build things. All right, the alms house. Uh, it looks like this is gonna get you points based on the number of these buildings that we construct. And it looks like odd numbers of these houses are bad for us, but even numbers of these houses are very good. I'll probably have a player try to focus on that for strategy. And finally, we have this millstone. Okay, so this millstone uh, scores two points if adjacent to um, the uh, granary and the tailor. So if I can get, or, or the tailor. So as I'm building, remembering trying to keep all those things straight, maybe I wanna get the granary tile there and I get some cottages here and this down here, whatever. Um, but each of these is gonna be worth two points if it is next to either this or this. So that's gonna be important to you as I plan out my placement. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's just a brief overview of what the different buildings are gonna do and how they score in this particular game. And then on top of that, each player, like I mentioned before, has their own unique monument card. Uh, these are the configurations of the cubes, more on that in a second. Uh, but each player is gonna have their own unique way to uh, score points with these. So for example, if the blue player gets this building built and says, when another player names a resource or calls out a colored cube, uh, you may choose to place it on a square with one of the cottages. Each of the cottages can hold one resource. So uh, usually when a player calls out a cube, everyone has to place it on an empty spot. This is kind of giving you almost an out. It's like giving you a placeholder for a cube if you don't want to put it out. You can store it in one of the cottages and it won't be a big deal. The red player's special building here that they have is worth three points if they can get it built, and they're gonna immediately place a building on an empty square in your town. So that's pretty awesome. It's basically like a free building, nice and easily put down. And the yellow player's building says, based on when you complete your town, uh, you're going to get six points of your first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Okay, so, that's, that's good to know for their strategy. So turns in this game are so deadly simple. Here's how it goes. It's your turn when you have this master builder hammer and you're going to just call out a color. So you're gonna call out one of the cube colors. Now these have like their resources. So like brown is wood, yellow is wheat, uh, blue is glass, gray is stone, and I think red is brick. So you essentially call out a resource, but I usually just say a color. And so on a player's turn, they're just going to uh, say one of those five colors, and every player has to take one of those colored cubes and place it somewhere in their town. So uh, just strategically, here's kind of what I'm planning on having us do. Let's just have the blue player play a really simple, straightforward strategy. They're gonna try to get some cottages and the granary and maybe some chapels. So they're not they're not gonna do anything frilly, they're just gonna stick with the basics. And um, because they're trying to get those cottages, they're also gonna try to get this statue here. So it's worth noticing that to build a cottage, the blue player's gonna eventually need a yellow, a blue, and a red. So let's just start off really simple. I'm gonna say the blue player calls out the color blue, okay, or glass. And they just need to put it anywhere on an empty space um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the corner because this is kind of a corner shape here. Now, it's important to know that you don't have to build, like you don't have to have white on top of blue and to the, like have red on the left-hand side. Kind of like Tetris, this can be in any configuration. So it could be like this, like this, or like this, or it could be uh, reflected, it could be the reverse of those things. But the big idea is you need a blue and then on one side of it a yellow and then on a on a different adjacent side we need a red does that make sense probably not but i'm rolling with it 
And now every single player needs to put a blue cube down. So um, I would love, I'm gonna have the red player focus on getting this building out first, and then they're gonna work on a factory. Um, so let's just put this here, and I'll kind of do gray, gray, and red like that. And I'm gonna have the yellow player kind of focus on ale houses. And so for that, I do need a blue cube, but it could be on the side of two gray cubes. So uh, I don't know that it matters so much where I put that. Let's, let's put it down at the bottom just to be adventurous. And that was the blue player's turn. We pass this over to the red player, who then calls out a color. Uh, again, I want to have them focus on, I want them to get their um, Grove University up quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and call out the stone or gray. So they need to place a cube and so does everybody else. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that right there. The yellow player is putting theirs here. And that isn't overly helpful for the blue player who is trying to get the cottage and the granary because those don't use any gray cubes at all. But remember, this can really go anywhere. Uh, let me focus on getting my cottages and granary here. So I could try to get my statue down in this corner. And so I'm kind of thinking of this like, like this or more like that, like the reflection. I want yellow, blue, gray, gray, blue. What, what? Yellow, brown, gray, gray, blue. Okay, so yes, my plan is to put this down here and to make that pretty. That was the end of the red player's turn, passing this over. And I think I'm gonna have the yellow player just call out another gray, another stone. So they're gonna put theirs here. Now, something I haven't said yet is, uh, after you've placed your stone, if or your cube, your resource, if you can and want to build a building, you build a building. And we can at this point because I now have the makings of the alms house. And so the yellow player, because they have the matching pattern there, they're just gonna grab this and they're just gonna put it on the board in one of these three spaces. Um, let's put it here, why not? And then all of those cubes that were used to build that house get cleared off and they are done with those cubes. Again, the gray cube doesn't help build the cottage or the granary, but we can go ahead and put that there to work on this statue. For the red player, still trying to get this thing built, so let's put that there. And that was the end of their turn. Let's get this passed over. So Blue's making the call. Uh, we could keep working on this building, but let's go for, I'm gonna call out a red. So red can either go here or here to help me build a cottage. Really doesn't matter as long, like if I put this here, I need yellow there or yellow there if I go that way. It doesn't matter, let's stick with it like that. This is actually great news for the red player. I wasn't even considering that. Um, <laughs> that will happen a lot this video. Uh, but if I put a red one here, then I can go ahead and clear these off and build this in any one of those four spaces. I should have put it down first. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. Of course, it goes without saying, probably in most games you're gonna stand it up like that so it looks like a cool town. I'm just laying it down for ease of viewing. These cubes get cleared out and that's going to be three points at the end of the game and then it says immediately place a building on an empty square in your town i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab a factory because a factory takes five cubes and because it's like four wide it's actually kind of a tough one to build so i want to grab one of those and having it earlier is better and then remember when this one is constructed we're going to place one of the five cubes on there now let me kind of show you like this uh kind of a fun design you have these kind of, um, can you see it? Like these gaps in the building? Oh, I'm trying to, yeah. And so you can actually kind of stand the cubes in like that, or even down here if you wanted to. Just kind of a fun thing. Um, yes, anyway, so we're gonna put one of the five resources on this building, and then anytime that resource is called, I could choose any cube instead. So this should be a good early game one to have. And so let's get this down. I could put it anywhere, but I think I just want to tuck it nice right there. And I don't know if it matters exactly which color I go for. Um, I'm kind of thinking strategically for this guy to have them working with the tailor and the grant. Yeah, let me show you. 
So I said before the blue player is going to work with cottages, the granary, and chapels. I'm going to have the red player go for the granary, the tailor, and the millstone. And so because of that, it looks like reds aren't going to be overly helpful. And so I'm going to pick red. So if someone calls a red, I can just grab any color. So let me just go ahead and put this red cube on it like that. So red isn't going to be at all helpful for the yellow player. Uh, no reds here and no reds on the alms house. And so maybe I want to build one of these factories so that I can kind of do a similar thing. So let's go ahead and put this in the corner here. Pass this over. You can see things go pretty fast in this game. Part of the reason I love it oh so much. Okay, so over here. Uh, next up, we were going to work on... We need to get um, some tailors and some and a granary. Yeah, okay, let's start with thinking about the tailors. So, yeah, because if, if I could get four tailors here, ooh, that would be really nice. So let's do that. I'm gonna call out stone. And uh, yes, let's put that here. I'm gonna go gray, blue, gray, yellow. To build the factory, I need to go red, gray, gray, red, brown, so gray right there. And another gray is not really helpful for the blue player unless I start thinking about my chapels. So I'm gonna start kind of trying to fit a chapel here-ish. If I change the direction I was doing these things, so if I go blue, brown, and yellow, I could try to squeeze the chapel pieces right here. Now, you can't use one cube like, like, okay, let's say I was building a chapel and a statue or whatever. Even if your buildings are kind of overlapping, you can't use one cube for two different buildings. You would have to um, complete a building which would remove the cube and that would no longer make it available for the other one. Does that make sense at all? Cubes can only be used to build one building at any time. Uh, okay, so for the chapel, that would need to be blue, gray, blue, gray. So let's blue, let's put it right there and pass this along. Uh, we're working on the factory still, so let's get uh, another stone or another gray right there. I believe I said blue, gray, blue, gray. Yep, put one right there. And that would put that there. Pass this over. Things are starting to get a little crowded. I've got to start building stuff over here for the blue player so I can start cleaning off some cubes. Let's get our cottage built. Uh, so I'm going to call out the yellow. And now I have this configuration made. It, even though the building's not being fed right now, we only check these scoring things at the end of the game. So we're good to just grab this one and build it. So I'm going to go ahead. It doesn't have to go here because it's blue. That's just a, a happy little accident. So there's that. Yellow can work for the tailor card, so blue would go here, so yellow needs to go there. Yellow is another color that doesn't actually help the yellow player. Let's see if we can work on getting this thing built here. Uh, so I believe I have space. I could try to get it up in this corner. So I'll put a yellow there. Pass this over. And we're going to get, oh yeah, so that's done. We needed a blue. So we're going to go ahead and build a blue here. That completes this configuration. So at the end of the game, that's one point plus one more point for all of the tailors we have in the middle. So this card could be potentially worth five points if I just have four of these tailors in the middle of the board. I'm gonna work towards that. So this is gonna go right here and we can go ahead and clean these cubes off. Let's see, blue doesn't help with the factory, but it would help with another alms house. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this here and hope that I clean off these cubes from the factory so that I can spread gray and gray that way in a little bit. And I could start, let's see, with the blue, I could start working on another cottage. Uh, so I want that to be the granary. So I could put this and try to get another, oh no, I wanted to work on the chapel, didn't I? Yeah, let's get a chapel done. I'm going to put that there. And that ends the red player's turn. We're going to go over here. And I've got to finish this factory. So that's going to need a red and a brown. So let's go ahead and call out red. Let's see, what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was working on this thing down here. So that needed to be blue, brown, and yellow. 
I need that one to be blue. I guess I could work on another cottage, so I'm gonna go ahead and put red here. I'm working on a lot of things. That's great. And the red player doesn't really want to use a red cube, and I don't have to because I have that factory in place. Let's start working on another tailor spot here, or it doesn't, it doesn't really matter my configuration. Let's pick yellow to go right there. Passing this over. Okay, um, I've got to get something finished here. So let's call out a blue. Yeah, blue. Uh, let's call out a blue and get this chapel finished. So we match the configuration, grab a chapel, and for all of my fed cottages, which I don't have any fed ones yet, this is going to be worth a point, but obviously I'm planning on getting that fed. I'm going to go ahead and put that there for now. Let's see, that's going to put a blue one here to try to get a tailor, so I want a gray and a gray there. A blue isn't helpful for my factory here um, or my almshouse here because I've already got that blue. So I need to get this going up here to try to get that building up. And we'll talk about completing. Essentially, your town is complete when you don't have any more spaces to put cubes. So all of the things are full and you can't build a building to remove some more cubes. So I kind of want to be the first one to do that for six points as long as I get this building built. Next up is red. They're gonna call out gray, so gray. Uh, we can go ahead and put a gray down here. And a gray is not gonna help them build any more cottages or the granary. We could start working on another chapel. Um, I could try to get another chapel down in this zone. Let's start doing that. So I could go gray, blue, gray, blue. And obviously I'm gonna to need to get the statue built before I do any of that. Yellow picks next. They're in desperate need for a brown. So a brown here gets them a factory. And they really don't care about um, reds or yellows, but I would like another factory at some point. So I guess I halfway care about red, but let's assign this one the color yellow, and then I can go ahead and remove these cubes. A brown would go great right here. And a brown, I want to get another tailor here, here, here. I guess could go great here. Yeah, because I could get, yes. I could try to get a millstone around these spots. Two points each if they're next to um, either the yellow building or the granary, which I'm not really doing. So then that passes this along. And okay, I, I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, I think I'm going, I probably am. I'm having the thought right now that I probably need to put little pictures of the cards so you can see what I'm trying to build. Because I keep saying it in my brain because I can look at, it doesn't matter. I'm probably doing it right now. Yes, so the blue player, what were they working on? Oh, they were working on this statue here. So they need a yellow and a blue. Uh, let's go ahead and call out a blue because uh, yellow would help out the yellow player. Blue, we could start planning for our next tailor. Let's put that there. And let's see if we can get this building built. I'll put a blue there. And it's the red player's turn. They're gonna need another gray. They're gonna need a lot of gray. So a gray goes here. And I don't remember if I said it explicitly, it doesn't have to be your turn to build a building. It's just after you place the cube, anybody can place a building. Um, what did I do? Oh, another tailor. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there, clean these things off. And another gray can go here to give me another um, ale house or what alms house. I think an ale house is a different card. I'm just going to grab it because there we go. Okay, that can go there. Let's see. I was doing another. I'm planning another chapel after this statue gets built. So uh, that would need to be a gray here. Ooh, where else could I put that gray? I would need it if I did gray, blue, gray, blue. Uh, but then I can't place the gray. So maybe I need to plan on getting another chapel here. So that would be gray, blue, gray. We'll go that direction. I got to get a granary made and more chapels. Ah, not, not chapels, um, cottages. Okay, passing this over. Let's get this thing finished up with a brown. So that goes there. And then we can go ahead. I'll just put that in the corner there. 
Once again, brown is really not gonna help unless I'm thinking about my granary, in which case I could go brown, red, yellow, yellow. And a brown would help if I was working on a millstone, so let's work on a millstone up this way. Blue is struggling, let's call out a yellow so that we can finally get this building made and I wanna get it down here out of the way like that. Let's see, a yellow could help me here. And a yellow doesn't help, but let's try to go this way to build these next alms houses. So I'll put a blue instead because I'm using my factory to do that. And red gets to call next. Okay, um, they need some stuff for their tailor. Oh, I need gray and gray. So we're going with gray. That works out perfectly for the yellow player. And the blue player, not so much. Um, chapel is going here. Oh man, I don't want this gray. So I could put this gray with this cottage. I would maybe put it, I don't know, somewhere. But essentially the cottage is our storage place. These can't be used to build things. They're just placed there and left there till the end of the game, just kind of staying out of the way. Uh, I mean, I guess I just keep working on chapels. I need a backup plan for um, those. I guess I could try to get a millstone. I could do that. Why is this brown here? Oh, that was for the granary. Okay, so if the granary is going there, let's put this here to try to get a millstone here. No, not there, here. You know, yeah, here. I think I know what I'm talking about. Next up is yellow, and they will call out gray. So they can go here and build another almshouse down there. So right now they have um, negative three points uh, because they have three of those houses, but that's okay. I definitely can get a fourth, and if, I think I can, I think I can pull this off. Blue. Once again, we're gonna have an issue because I don't want this. Um, okay, let's put it up here. I guess maybe I should have gone for a factory, but it might be a little late for that. Or well, at least we're running low on space for that. Ah, I don't know. Gray is perfect for the red player because then they can get another tailor right there. Next up, blue's calling the shots, which is good. They really need it. Um, oh, wait a second, why? Oh, I have to get that chapel built. That was really poor placement. That was stupid. Shouldn't have put that there. That's okay. We're calling out blue. I'm gonna need to put another blue down here to build a chapel here. Let's see, working on our last one. Oh, I don't want that. Uh, I go blue, yellow, gray, gray. Blue would go great there. Now it's red. Uh, let's go for a yellow. And yellow doesn't want a yellow, they want a gray. And blue does want a yellow, but they want a yellow right here or here. Ah, I really messed that up. Okay, but that's okay, we can make this work because I also do want a cottage like here. So if that's, okay, but I can't get in the way of my granary. Uh, mm, I think I'm still safe because I can finish up my chapel. Yes, so this needs to go here. I need a blue one over there for the cottage, right? Cottage, chapel, granary. Millstone, millstone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this it's it's, it's kind of tricky to track three players, but it's easier than it should be. Let's just pretend like I'm a genius. We're gonna call gray, okay? Because that will clear these off and gets me another one of those. A gray is not helpful here. I need this out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna, how do I get that out of the way? Here. Gray is great right there. Blue. Uh, can I say a thing really fast? I'm mad at myself because had I planned this a little bit better, I could get more Taylor buildings. Like if I didn't, okay, if I didn't have this brown cube here, I could have gone blue, gray, and put another Taylor building here. And then I could have gone gray and put another tailor, like, because each of these tailor buildings are going to be worth five points because I'm going to have four in the middle. So maybe I, maybe I need to, uh, I think I can get, 
I think I can get one more Taylor building. I could have five Taylor buildings all together because I could put another Taylor building down, down here. Can I? No. If I put one here, I can't get one in the middle. Yeah, I'm mad at myself. If I had been able to put one here, then I could have still gone uh, here. Ah, dang it. Yeah. I wasn't thinking. I've never played with the tailor before, so that's a new... I had to think. Ah, okay. But it doesn't matter, because I've got to get blue. Needs to build this chapel to get it out of the way. There it is. Grab one more of these. Um, I realize I'm not planning this very well for the blue player. The whole point of the chapel is I've got to get cottages built and fed, and it's just people keep calling out grays, and the grays aren't useful, and I should have built a factory. Let's see, a blue is really not going to be useful to this player any longer either. Um, unless I were to build, well, a chapel is not going to do me any good because I don't think I'm going to get a granary built, which means I'm not going to get any cottages made. So the chapel doesn't do me any good. I could kind of try to go for an almshouse. I just need to stay out of the way of things. So I guess the most out of the way place to put this, geez, I don't know. That's probably still in the way, but it's where that's going. Funny enough, the blue player and the red player are running out of space, but because of this, I want the yellow player to run out of space first, but they're being too efficient. So shame on yellow for being too awesome. Uh, okay, I could build up this way to get two more here and here, or it could go this way. Let's, let's go that way pass this over we need a gray so that's going to get me my final tailor there which is all well and good but now i'm kind of in a pickle i probably just need to get millstones built around a gray is great for the yellow player and once again a gray is not great for uh the blue player crap these stupid grays um okay do I put that there? No, what am I doing with these? Oh, I was gonna go for those. I need to get, what was I doing? Oh, I need a blue here, or I could go brown. Mm. To get, okay, to get this out of the way, I'm gonna put it here with the cottage. Remember, it's not there to build. They're just storing it away. Think of the village. The movie The Village with the box. They're going to keep a box with a stone cube in it. Pass this along. And we're going to call Gray again and just keep ticking off the blue player. They're probably grumbling. Like every time someone says Gray, they need to play better poker is what it is. They're like, oh, I can't believe somebody's calling them. So they get those. And that's going to be their fifth ale house, which would be minus five points. But they're going to be able to get a sixth one, no problem. Oh, I can't believe there's another Gray. Um... Yeah, I guess I'm going in that corner. I just have to keep this space open. Okay, gray can go here, and that will be a millstone, two points if adjacent to a yellow or a red building. So we got that there. Blue's turn. Okay, uh, I need another yellow and a red, or I need, I need a blue. Let's call out blue. Oh, that's not blue. Let's call out blue. That way they can build this cottage right there. Another storage space if they need it because of that. Yeah, once again, blue's not really helpful for them. Um, geez, let's put it here. But yep, we can use blue over here. Pass this along. All right, they need a gray. So calling out gray, that will get them another millstone worth two points because it's next to that uh, yellow building and a gray can go there and i don't want this gray anywhere so i'm going to put it with this cottage there pass this over and of course they're going to call out gray because that will get them their sixth alms house and now they no longer care about those the blue player is in some serious spatial trouble. No joke. I could build a mill house here. Um, okay, my plan is to build another cottage here, 
here. And then millhouse needs to go here. So I'm going to place this here. If I change my mind, I could turn that into a millhouse, but it won't score me any points because it won't be next to a yellow or um, a red building because the red building's going here and I don't have any yellow buildings because I was a fool. Uh, let's see if we can get some more mill houses, maybe one here and then one here and then one here. And then that'll be the end of the red players um, work. Did I say mill house like <laughs> the Simpsons? I meant millstone clearly. Now, now that this is all done, I truly do not know what I'm going to do next. So I will think about that. They could really just try to fill up their board nonsensically in order to get six points, which might be the best thing to do because how else are they going to spend their stuff? I have no idea. But the blue player, again, I need to build right here. So I'm going to call out blue looks like it's hurting the red player. So let's call out blue. Uh, they'll put one here. And really, really, I mean, maybe I could get some tailors. Taylor's built in the middle four. Well, okay. Um, or what else could I do? That's pretty much it. I don't think that I could fit a granary. I mean, I could fit a granary and then a cot. That just seems like too much work for nothing. Where I could just get six points by being the first one to fill up. So let's potentially think about getting a tailor here. Like build a tailor in some of these spots. Um, but probably I just want to fill up the space and get six points faster. Ooh, but that would get dangerous though because don't forget at the end of the game we're just going to clear off any of the cubes and empty spaces are going to be minus one point at the end of the game. So that's not good either. Okay, uh, next. Um, they're going to call out brown so that I can fill up that space there and in turn get a millstone here. So maybe I do need to be a little more careful and strategic with what I was doing. So if I'm going to get a tailor here, uh, I could kind of work on getting a millstone here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to balance this. I don't want to lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points by just filling this up nonsensically because that would be a net of minus two points. But the longer I take to fill up my town, I'm losing points. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Let's see, a brown, another brown is not helpful. Um, unless I put it here to clear these cubes off and put a millstone there. I mean, I guess I could fill up with millstones that are worthless. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Um, for now, let's call out a gray. So a gray can go here, and then let's do make that a millstone, but I am still planning on doing gray, gray, yellow there. And this gray is absolutely unhelpful. It goes there. This gray is also unhelpful. It goes there. No, it's not unhelpful. I can get a millstone down here, right? Yes, I could build one here and then another one here. Yes, I can do this. Blue's calling the shots. Blue is really playing a dangerous game here. Uh, okay, so I could, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go like yellow and red. I'm going to put a yellow right here. And then let's go ahead and do put a millstone down here, just because at the very least, I'm clearing off some space so that I, oops, over there. Yes, yes. Then I'll put another brown and put another millstone. Now those won't be worth points, but they're going to stop me from losing points later on. Yes. And another gray um, can go here. And then I'll put a brown, make a millstone, put a brown, make a millstone. You know, assuming those are called, which they won't be. Wait, what was I doing? Sorry. Sorry. I got mixed up. That's a yellow. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Yellow goes here out of the way. Yellow goes here for the tailor. And then we're passing this along. Okay, they need a brown, which in turn gets them the millstone here. They get a brown, which in turn doesn't help them <laughs> at all. Uh, let's get it out of the way um, here. 
So this brown I'm going to put here and let's do make that a millstone down there. Sorry, it's got to go grab it. Yep. The decisions are getting tougher. Um, they're calling out a gray, which 100% messes with their plan. Crap. Okay, because here's why. I need these four squares to build my granary, and I have to build that, because that's going to be worth no points for the granary, but that will be six points between these two houses and an, and then two points and two points. I have to get that thing built, um, even though <laughs> the blue player is going to lose without question. So what I'm going to have to do is put this here. I might have to ignore that other cottage that I really could have used really badly. And I'm going to have to get the granary up here. So another gray goes there, and blue desperately needs to call the next shot. Gosh, I've really painted myself into a corner here. Okay, what, is this crap? I can't do it. I can't even get a granary there because I gotta get rid of this blue. The only way to get rid of that blue is, how can I get rid of that blue? Okay, I've gotta think on my toes. Hold on, I have to open this up. What was I putting? I'm calling the shot. Okay. I have to open this up. The only way to open that up is to put a gray here and build the tailor spot here. And that opens up these four for me to try to get the granary, which will never happen, but I don't really have any other choice. So I'm calling out gray here because that's gonna fit the tailor right here. And I've gotta go yellow, yellow, brown, red. <laughs> Come on, red and yellow players, just call out your own colors. And a gray has to be placed, it would go here, which means that the red player is out because they can't turn anything into a building. Oh, yes they can. Oh, do they want to? I could, hmm, I am going to. I could make an almhouse here. Now that's gonna be minus one point, but it's gonna fill up a space which will be plus one point. So I do think that was an accidental worth it thing because I'm gonna fill up that space and I'll have a little more time to try to get one more millstone down here. Gray, of course, is helpful to this player here. So that's gonna be a tailor spot. Man, they are just getting lucky with those calls. Good luck, blue player. Um, just, just to be a little generous to blue, we're gonna call brown. But if I did call gray, blue would be done, absolutely. So with this brown being called, let's plan on trying to put another, so we're gonna get a mill house there. Why do I keep an alm, no, a millstone alms house, not a mill house. I don't know what to do with this thing. Um, we, we could put it, we could put it here. Totally just trying to help Brown because I've really let them down. Did you, did you guys hear that rhyme? I, 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 I do it all the time. But we're going to go ahead and call Gray. So a gray here is going to let us get a millstone there. And that's essentially going to ruin it for this player. Uh, yeah, so my point about building millstones is just to cover up these points. So, yeah. Mm. Crap. This gray can go there, and I'll get a pointless, literally, millstone. Or here, because if I tried, I could get another tailor here and make these each worth two points. Yes, so brown, no, blue, gray, yellow. Yes, change of plans, I'm adaptable. So this is gonna go here, which will put that there, blue. Okay, assuming gray is gonna get called, because it always does, 
Um, let's go for a blue or a yellow. Let's go for a blue. And that means that this goes here. Red has completely filled up. There's no way for them to clean anything else off. They, they are out of the round, but obviously we still need to do final scoring for them. I don't really know where to put this blue cube. Here, let's tuck it over here. So now red is out, so we're gonna pass this over to yellow, who is just looking to fill up space. Now, remember, they are not gonna qualify to get six points anymore. Now we're kind of fighting for three points. Um, but we also need to fill up spaces. So let's call out a, can I do anything? I don't think I can do anything. Um, a gray and put a worthless mill house that will just cover up a space. Oh, I honestly didn't do that on purpose, but the gray was good for the blue player. Obviously lots of things are on my mind, but now they can call out yellow, put a yellow here, and that's going to get them a tailor right there. And a yellow, I mean, I could put any color. Do I, here, let's put down, let's put down a, a brown, why not? Brown, instead of the yellow, I'll do another mill house just to fill up space. This goes back to yellow. Um, we'll call a gray to go here. And that's gonna get me that one there. Not too bad, I could put another mill, mill stone here. So I'll end up calling a brown. I've never relied so heavily, heavily on these things. So we're gonna put that there. And I don't think I ever said it, but there's no limit to the number of cubes or the number of buildings. So if you have to replace them with other things, that's fine. I say that because in this game, I went super heavily <laughs> with these, um, these gray buildings, which I've never actually done before, but it was, it was fun. Um, actually, did I wanna put that there? Let's put that there so I can build another one down here. Now I can't remember if that was gray or brown. Um, what did I just call? I'm gonna guess, I don't know. It was either gray or brown. Sorry, I forgot, I'll annotate, but let's pretend it was a brown. Either way, it's gonna be their turn to call a gray to get that there. And a gray can go here. And then um, it'll be blue's turn to call a brown. There we go. And, um, oh yes. Let me just really quickly mark that we were the second to complete our town. If you finish at the same time as somebody else, you still take the, 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 the best points available in the case of a tie. It explains that in the rule book, but either way, we're gonna put this here and then blue is the only player left over. So they're gonna call out any color. It doesn't matter. Okay, now everybody has completed their tiny towns. So now we're gonna enter the scoring phase. And so here is the score pad. Let's go ahead and label this blue, uh, red, yellow. All right, now remember that these buildings, the factories, here, let me grab the card, they actually don't score any points on their own. So it doesn't matter how many factories any of these players have in this game, they didn't score any points. Next up, cottages. Cottages score three points, but only if the building is fed. This is the first time I've played this game where I didn't get these things fed on any of the player boards. So that's truly embarrassing. Um, yeah, so I had these and all the intention to build one of these buildings. It didn't happen though. And obviously that didn't happen for the red player or the yellow player. So that's really cool. Just so you know, the blue player is going to lose and they're not just gonna lose, they're gonna lose hardcore. Oh, but I did forget that you do need to remove any cubes uh, that were left over on the board. And remember these cubes, they don't actually do anything. It, so I could take them or leave them. Oh, I need to get rid of that one too. So the red player, I need to lose these ones and just that one for the yellow player. Okay, next up, man, this is a fun scoring round. Next up was chapels. And remember the chapel, uh, here, let me get the card. The chapel was only worth one point for each fed cottage. The blue player was the only one to get any chapels and they didn't feed <laughs> their people. <laughs> wow, this is an exciting playthrough. Thanks, Tom, for making it. It's so cool. Okay, next up is the green ale house. The blue player, what is that? Yes, almshouse. Oh my gosh. Blue player didn't have any. 
The red player had one, which is going to be minus one point. Um, so minus one for red and 26 points for yellow. So I guess while we're here, uh, let's look at the yellow buildings, the tailors. So the tailor is worth one point on its own, plus another point for each of the tailors in the center, four squares. So that's one point on its own, plus another point because it's in the center. So two points there. And then these are each worth one point on their own, plus another four points, one for each in the center. So those are five points. So that's 20 points for the red player. And then for the blue player, there was one in the middle. So those are each worth two points. So that's uh, four points for the blue player. Next up here are the millstones, which were two points if adjacent to a yellow or a red. It's not for each of those kinds of buildings that they're next to, it's just flat two points if they're next to them. So for example, this one was worth two, this is worth two, this is worth two, this is worth two, and these aren't worth any. So the blue player just got eight points for those, and the red player got two, four, six, eight, ten for those, and four for the yellow player. Okay, next up, these buildings, if they're worth any points. So for the yellow player, that was three points for theirs. For the red player, three points for theirs. And the blue player's wasn't worth any points on its own. Um, and had I played a more intelligent game, that still would have been really valuable to just be able to place cubes on there to take them out of the way. Okay, next up, we need to lose one point per empty square. So that's gonna be minus three points, minus four points for the red player, and oh, oops, minus two points, sorry, minus two points for the yellow player. Add all of those points together, and wow, blue got <laughs> nine points, yeah! But man, imagine how cool that would have been. Just imagine if that had been there, they would have gotten six, seven, eight, nine, ten more points, plus the that would have gotten two more points as well. So they would have had 11 more points. So they actually would have, wait, 11, 11 plus nine is 20. So they still would have lost, but it would have been closer for them. But as it was, it was really embarrassing. Um, okay, so there you have it. That was Tiny Towns. Epic fail on Blue's part, epic success over here on the Yellow's part, and Red was kind of in the middle. Um, usually, as I play this game, I kind of just try to stick with the, the feeding and the cottages and throw in a couple of other things. So it was actually really fun in this video to just try different kinds of strategies and awesome how it paid off. I truly didn't intentionally mean to have such good calls for the Yellow player. I'm not sure how or why that happened, or maybe I was just brilliant and I just played it so nicely, or or maybe I made mistakes and I haven't caught them yet. Um, but that was just kind of fun to see that one actually play out and work as nicely as it did. Um, so this game, I like, I, I love it for a couple of reasons. Number one, so easy to teach. Number two, super fast to play. Number three, this scratches that Karuba itch. I love Karuba so much. And um, yeah, so I've been wanting to do a gameplay along of Karuba, but in my brain I haven't figured out how to do the points for being the fastest to the different things. So I'm still, I would love to do a gameplay along of Karuba. I just, I gotta figure out how to race against you, the viewer. Um, but once I figure that out, I'll do it. If you have an idea, throw comments down. I'm kind of just thinking of almost doing like a countdown. Ooh, maybe that, ooh, I got an idea. It doesn't matter. We're talking about tiny towns. Um, the other thing is it feels kind of Sudoku-ish. Like, you really are just trying to calculate the best placement for each cube. And then I look, it's just so satisfying once you place the building and clear it off and things feel empty again. And then it really revs up near the end when you're totally out of space to do anything. So, yeah, man, I'm really liking this game. I'm playing it a lot solo, uh, just because it's a really easy thing to come home from work, sit down, turn on the crazy news in the background, and just play a super fast game of this. 
Um, I am going to do a game play along video if you enjoyed doing this and you want to try to play with me. Uh, there it will be a link in the in the description of this video, so please feel free to play along. Tons of people are doing the play along videos um, for this game, but let's pretend like mine's going to be the most fun because you're going to have my truly blessed commentary. Anyway, I love this game. What do you guys think about this game? Leave me a comment in the description of this video. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you guys hopefully in the gameplay along video where I'm going to win things. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye.